Okay, so Pi News episode 31, and I'm starting this off with Raspberry Pi OS 64 bit, and I'll switch over to screen capture. So thanks to Gus Albert for letting me know this new version was here. Uh, for your information, there's a new Raspberry Pi OS Buster ARM64 image posted on May the 28th, you know where. And uh, so it's in the official repository of Raspberry Pi OS. I'll put a link in the description. Uh, there's a light version as well. So this is the standard version which I'm using. Uh, and you can see it's this download. And you're looking for the biggest download here. So there's a one gig one. But if I go back uh, and keep going back, there is a light folder here somewhere. Yeah, this one here, Raspberry OS Light Arm 64. So if you click on that, you'll find that if you just want to try it out, just the basics, uh, there is a smaller version, 387 megabytes. Uh, I couldn't really find out an awful lot about the differences that are there. So uh, I'd scrolled through the information and the comments and things on here. But uh, yeah, I couldn't really find out much different, but it does feel really nice and fast. Uh, it I've, I've managed to install all sorts of things in it and I've just been sort of generally playing around with it and it is great. I'm always really impressed with these 64-bit builds. Still in beta at the moment but obviously that will change at some point. So next up is this one on YouTube uh, and this is by Network Chuck and I found it a really interesting video. Uh, he basically creates a dark web website on a Raspberry Pi uploads it and also accesses it from the Pi as well. And uh, yeah, really interesting. Uh, although I couldn't get the link to work. Uh, so this one here, if I copy it in, uh, I've downloaded the Tor browser, which allows you to access the dark web. Uh, and if I paste it in, it comes up with this message. Uh, so you can see it here, I've got it pasted in. Although the Facebook link that he mentioned uh, in the article does work. This is a dark web version of the of Facebook. And also I found the DuckDuckGo site worked as well. So certain things are working, but for some reason I couldn't get his link to work. And I was just interested to see what it was because I'd, I'd followed the video all the way through. Um, so maybe there's something I need to do extra to be able to get it. He was using the Brave browser. The reason I use the Tor browser is because it's just easily downloadable. So Pi apps, even on this 64-bit version of Raspberry Pi OS, uh, you can just go into internet and you can see Vivaldi and also the Tor browser are there and you can just click on them and install them. Very, very simple. Loads more content seems to be appearing for Pi apps on 64-bit, which is great to see. Uh, and I've installed Commander Pi, which is working fine. Uh, I'm overclocked at the moment to 2147, but I saw on Reddit that uh, someone's gone higher and uh, I thought I'd have a look, thought I'd give it a go, thought I'd do a bit of a live test. Uh, so I've done loads of overclocking on my Pi, 2.3 gigahertz. I generally use at 2147 or 22, something like that. Uh, I've even overclocked without cooling and also I've gone up to 950 on the GPU as well. But this one on Reddit uh, had all the settings in, which was nice to see. Uh, I don't want notifications. And uh, so these are the settings to add to config.txt. So let's pop them into terminal and give them a try. So sudo nano boot forward slash config. There's several ways to do it, and you can also do it with Commander Pi, uh, which is an easier way than doing this, but this allows me to do a bit more as well, because there's a few extras I have to put in there. So let's see, I don't think Commander Pi adds it to here. GPU frequency overall, oh yes it does. So you can see here, ARM frequency 2147. So let's go right up to 2350. GPU frequency they add is 850, so let's do the same. Over voltage was 15. Then we need force turbo equals one and boot delay. I haven't used that one before. I can boot delay ought to be further up. Let, let's put that further up. Let's go right at the top. So that's everything in. So let's do control X and yes and enter. And I need to reboot, but I'm going to switch cameras for this bit to see what happens, basically. Okay, so I just need to type in reboot. And uh, out of interest, I've changed my power adapter just playing around with it. This is my USB-C uh, MacBook Air power adapter. I've got an M1 MacBook Air, and it's 30 watt. And uh, I just wanted to try it with different drives to see, uh, and I'm still playing around with it, to see if it works better having multiple drives because it's got more power than the 18 watt. Uh, Raspberry Pi official one. Anyway, let's reboot. Let's not delay this. Uh, this may not work, obviously. It may be too much for my individual Pi 
because with overclocking sometimes uh, some pies will do better than others and they did mention in the article that um, the 8 gig Pi has slightly better power handling uh, which I can't remember if I've reported on that before I feel that the 400 definitely does okay it's booted up well that's a good start and I haven't got anything showing temperature so let's right click here and do add remove panel items uh, add scroll down to temperature and hit add and you can see it says 46 at the moment so i'll keep the temperature going in the bottom right hand corner i'm not using any active cooling uh, with this 2350 overclock i'm using the 52 pi ice tower cooler so it will be interesting to see how well that copes as you can see i've got quite a lot of tabs open quite a lot of them are youtube videos but they're paused at the moment because uh, I don't want the sound to go while I'm doing the news. Right, so uh, this next story from ZDNet, Raspberry Pi after launching five devices in less than a year, here's what they're doing next. It was a really interesting story, this. Definitely worth reading through. And there was lots of stuff about the pandemic and about uh, you know being a very good time for the Raspberry Pi 400 to be released. Upton says the timing of the Raspberry Pi 400 was purely coincidental. The company had, after all, been running with the idea of putting a Raspberry Pi inside a keyboard for more than four years. Sales of the Raspberry Pi 400 currently sit at between 300,000 and 400,000 units as of March 2021. It is a great device. You can see some things about how it's helped COVID-19 patients. So the big thing at the end of the story, software will be the focus for Raspberry Pi in 2021. Um, so they're going to work really hard on software. There won't be as many hardware releases as there, as there were in 2020. The Pi 5 is mentioned. Does that mean no imminent plans for Raspberry Pi 5 then? We're thinking about it. We're not quite sure what it will look like yet, he says. But it's a really good story. I won't go through all of it. It's worth having a read of. Really, really detailed. Next up is an operating system update. Uh, and you can see uh, there are download links in this story. Uh, basically, there's a newer version of Kali Linux. So Kali Linux 2021.2. And it talks about the changes. KA Boxer is a tool for packaging tricky applications in Docker containers so they can be used on Kali. These include apps that are hard to package correctly due to complex dependencies, legacy programs and libraries, and apps that need to run in isolation. And Kali Tweaks is an automation tool that's aimed at helping Kali users customize the OS quickly and painlessly. For example, it can be used to install or remove groups of tools, change the default login shell, enable or disable bleeding edge and experimental branches. There's also uh, a few more things on here as well. So again, have a read of that story. But it's always nice to see uh, a lot of these operating systems getting regular updates and improvements on the Pi. And next up, I've ordered a Argon 1 expansion board. I actually ordered it from Amazon. Um, but uh, this is an M.2 SATA board, uh, which is designed for an Argon 1 case. Now, I don't have an Argon 1 case. But I thought the price of this as a SATA adapter was actually pretty reasonable, especially as people have been saying the compatibility is great, works really well. So I just thought it's probably one of the better ones to get. And it does say up here, uh, adds M.2 SATA SSD compatibility to a Raspberry Pi, only works with Argon 1 Raspberry Pi 4 case, which I thought was a bit weird because when you look at it, it's just a USB 3 adapter. So I may be wrong, but it looked like it would work to me. Um, so I've ordered it and figured I'd give it a try. If it doesn't work, I will order the other part of the Argon 1 case so I will then have an Argon 1 case to be able to use. But I'd like to be able to use it in my tower and also play around with it with other builds. But uh, yeah, I thought it was a good price. And uh, hopefully, as I say, compatibility will be really good. Not sure if it comes out of here. It looks like it does. It looks like it's just four Phillips screws. And maybe I can attach it to my Ice Tower cooler case uh, and be able to use it in that. So this will use one of these USB 3 A to A adapters. Now, if that doesn't fit my board in the angle that I want it to go or anything, I can just use a cable. I have a USB 3 cable uh, with A to A on it, which came with uh, a Dynamode USB to SATA adapter. So I know I can get around that. So hopefully it will work, but uh, watch this space. That will be coming in the future. It's going to take about 10 days because I think it's coming from the States. How's my temperature? Not bad, look, 53, 52. I know I'm only going through web pages and things like that, but uh, yeah, it's definitely, the stability is still there. Uh, so maybe 2350 is fine. Now, this was the last Raspberry Pi news, uh, the one with the whistle in it. And I had a comment from Elo Kajerside. Sorry if I've got that wrong. Uh, it was actually deleted because it had a link to a video. Uh, any comments with web links generally get automatically deleted. And I've had a few people complaining to me saying that I'm deleting their comments, and I'm really not. Uh, as soon as a comment 
has a web address in it, it just seems to get deleted. Some people get by with putting spaces in various different places and things like that, but in general, uh, if it's got a web link, it will get deleted by YouTube. Luckily, I had an email link for it, and uh, so I could get the name back and also the video. So if I close this one down. Uh, this is, uh, it was relating to Pi News 30. Basically, I showed some 3D printing software that someone else had put up, and I just thought it looked really interesting. And uh, this also is really in depth, and there's so much detail to this. And I just really like to see the way that these things are planned and uh, and executed and the way the software recognizes things and the way you can build these things up. So uh, yeah, really interesting, worth looking through if you like that sort of thing. Uh, I just love to see, I mean, the amount of detail and you know, this software is incredible really. Uh, and this is FreeCAD, this one. Next up was from Microberry Colors and uh, they just wanted me to show their, the case that they created. Uh, from a different design, all the details will be in there. Um, but uh, if I flick through, it's got some sort of flashing lights, uh, a display, does look very nice. I had a look at the channel and the bit that interested me more was uh, the bit where it was showed 3D printing. I'll show a bit of it, but I can't show very much. It's only a 10 second video, but I'll just play it for a little tiny bit. But it actually shows the 3D printing process and I kind of like to see that sped up. It, uh, yeah, it looks really cool. Next up is a story that was everywhere, uh, Raspberry Silicon update. So this is the uh, processor that comes on the Pico and it's available for a dollar. Um, so various different people who manufacture boards and products uh, are gonna be able to get this chip and then integrate it into their projects. Really interesting, really impressive to see. And on the subject of the Pico, if I go out of screen capture, 52 Pi sent me a package recently and uh, the bit that I uh, talked to them about was this one, the Armour Light heatsink with PWM fan. So this has, uh, I've reviewed a previous one to this before, uh, but this fan is temperature controlled and uh, so I'll be really interested to see what that's like. I'm going to do that in a separate video. I may also do a video on this. Um, this is the Pico starter kit and uh, there's all sorts of things in here. Uh, and all sorts of things you can build up. It's not something I generally do, but uh, they said they'd send me one, so I figured I'd have a look. Uh, but I've got a Pico, I've got all sorts of things in here. I think that's LED lights in there. Yeah, it looks like LED lights in there. There's all these little things. And the pins, and loads and loads of cables. I mean, it will definitely come in handy. Um, but there's all sorts in here. Uh, I'm amazed, what's that, that's just a USB micro cable, uh, there's some sort of display here. Uh, I don't even know what kit it is, but I've, if I find out exactly what the kit is, I'll put a link in the description. There's something else there, I can't even work out what that is. Looks like a mini CRT tube, but I'm sure it's not. Uh, and then a few different things that you can clip onto, and well, that's got some sort of double sided on it. I guess this is more lights, is it? I, re I really don't know. This isn't really a side of the pie that I've ever got into. I'm kind of intrigued by it. Micro servo as well. Okay. Oh yeah, similar. I used to have that with Tamiya model cars years ago. So I could do something with that. But it's it's one of those things is, is the finding the time to do something like this and the amount of detail I'll have to go into. But I'm sure I'll have a look at it in the future anyway. I'm never going to get all that back in the box. So last up uh, was a really good build. Uh, so an arcade machine, but one that you can hide in plain sight, as you can see here. Uh, so this is what it looks like when it's all tucked away and uh, it just wouldn't look out of place in any room. Need to do something about that mains cable maybe. Uh, but uh, yes, looks so nice. The, the controllers look really nice. The six buttons, uh, you can see the display in there. It looks like there's sound there as well. And if I scroll down through, you can see there's a, a picture of the workshop there. Like. But also the underside of the shelf, so you can see the six buttons and how it's all wired up and everything. Really, really nice build. Uh, loads of work gone into that, but also it just doesn't look out of place in a room as well. Excellent work. Okay, so I hope all this helps. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.